Hello everyone, how are you going? And welcome to Why Lake Mead is Running Out of Water, something that is definitely a topic of discussion at the moment, but something I know little about. This is the Colorado River, mm. one of the largest rivers in the United States. In the world. Starting off in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, the river flows for more than 1,400 miles through the Colorado Plateau and into Lake Mead. Wow. While the river has historically provided water to tens of millions of people, today the Colorado River is reaching record low water levels, threatening the water supply of both Lake Mead and Lake Powell. But the real reason behind this decline is much more complex than many would first believe, and is the result of a number of large-scale infrastructure projects. Firstly, I just want to know, what was that? That looked like kind of an aqueduct or some kind of obviously man-made system there. Where, come on, bring it, there it is. My goodness, that is, I guess it kind of looks like it's a snaking river, but it's just too embanked, or I don't know what you would call it. I mean, it is clearly very flat either side of it, unlike what we are seeing here, where you have these rocky just outcrops that are just being carved through years and thousands and millions of millennia just from ice and then now water. But then you go to this and you go, that's just dead flat concrete everywhere. And so I'm wondering what that could possibly be for. I mean, besides this mega farm that I'm seeing, but I had no idea that it was actually feeding two lakes. I mean, I knew that it was obviously feeding Lake Mead. That's what the entire video is about. And that just basically waters all of Vegas. But where does the second one come into it? Because even looking around, we can see that there are a couple of other lakes and I'll have to go back and see exactly what it is. Like, that's a massive one up there. I mean, it's got nothing on the Great Lakes, of course. But either way, Lake Mead down here, I wonder what it really looks like because I don't believe if we zoom in, it's looking anything like that. I mean, he just said Lake Powell. And so what is that? Like... Powell? Oh, like the Powell? That certainly makes sense that these two water supplies would be connected because you can just see that scarring of the earth. It's honestly incredible. The primary use of the water in the Colorado River is for the agriculture industry in the southwestern okay. part of America. Roughly 70% of the river's water goes towards this industry. Wow. Additionally, seven. seven different states also rely on the river for a portion of their water supply systems. Wow. These states being Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, Wyoming, Arizona, California, and Nevada. <sighs> In all, California. the river supports more than 40 million people throughout this entire region. Oh my goodness, that means that that one river that is getting to astronomically low levels is supporting more people than, I wouldn't say more than double Australia, but well more than Australia's population. I mean, I can only imagine that the majority of that population does live in California, and these ones are more sparsely populated, but either way, watering 40 million people is an astronomical amount, and I guess that's the problem with agriculture, is generally it takes precedence, or they have some kind of contract, or just the ability to take as much as they want. The Colorado River is divided into two separate basins, with the upper okay. basin including states such as Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, and Wyoming, while the lower basin includes Arizona, California, and Nevada. Right. Ultimately, the states were divided into two separate basins to allocate rights to use the water from the Colorado River. Each basin is allocated 7.5 million acre-feet of water per year from the Colorado River. From there, the water is distributed to the individual states, based on their populations and other key factors. Right. These statistics show just how many acre-feet of water each of the basin states receive per year. Oh, okay, there we go. I mean, I'm still confused what he means by acre-feet because that is using two units of measurement or two units of area measurement in one sentence and they're conflicting each other in my mind. I mean, at least I can see here how this entire thing is distributed and so California does actually take the most, which is interesting because I didn't think it ran that far. I would have thought he said it gets a portion of its water from the Colorado River for a reason, but that is not a portion if you're taking the majority of anyone. And I guess it is nice to know that there is some theory behind allocation of water supply. It's not like, ah, uh, anyone can take anything they want especially the upstream people and then they just suck it dry from everyone else just downstream like it often happens in australia no they do actually have an allocation or an expected maximum allocation i can only assume as he said each basin is allocated 7.5 million acre feet of water and then that just gets split up independently of each state nevada population what is it going to be three million and they only get 0.3s because it's not like this has three million then they have 17 and 38 and 44 or anything like that so i wonder how they split it up i guess it's just based on agriculture is probably the main thing. As we can see, states such as California are receiving more than 4 million acre-feet of water per yeah, year, in lot. correspondence with its large population. Additionally, Mexico is receiving 1.5 million acre-feet of water per year, as part of the Colorado River Compact Agreement. Did he just say Mexico or New Mexico? Additionally, Mexico is receiving 1.5 million yeah, acre-feet of water Mexico. per year, as part of the Colorado River Compact Agreement. Right. In addition to all these states using the water, we also have to account for the long-term droughts in the southwest over the past few years. This has resulted in the river not replenishing as much as it normally does, at different times throughout the year. This has then caused the water levels to drop at both Lake Mead and Lake Powell over the past two decades. Mm. We also have to keep in mind decades. that there are a total of 15 dams along the Colorado River, 
more than any other river across the United States. Hang on a second, 15 dams? How are they possibly sharing all that water? And I mean, if I was the dam upstream, I'd be going, okay, well, I don't want to release my water because I have a use case for it, but I guess my contract says that I have to, otherwise downstream is never going to get any. And so all of a sudden, it seems like a very convoluted and complicated situation to deal with, just especially having 15. I mean, I can only assume maybe some of them are hydroelectric and so they're just kind of passing water through instead of actually kind of damming it per se, because we can clearly see what a dam does to the water supply. You know, it just trickles at one end, and even though that looks like a lot of water still at that end, it is nothing in comparison to the dammed side. Two of the most notable being the Hoover Dam and the Glen Canyon Dam. Hoover Dam yeah. All 15 of these dams have created a number of reservoirs all throughout the river, which yeah, supply right. water to cities and towns nearby. Most of these reservoirs are currently in an extremely dire condition, as a result of the ongoing drought. Lake yeah. Mead stands at just 28% of its total capacity, wow. and Lake Powell stands at just 25%. These extreme figures once again relate back to the state of the Colorado River and its decline. While all of this is playing a role in the decreasing water levels in the river, one of the key causes is the large-scale water transport projects that have been built throughout this region. The central- Hang on a second, before he goes into it, look at that. I've only seen about six frames of it, but that is a serious looking investment just to be stealing that much water via these river systems, man-made river systems. I can only imagine that would take a very long time to build, and so how long has this been in planning? Because he said that the Colorado River has been struggling for two decades, but maybe this was made when they were in some kind of rainy season or something. I have no idea. I mean, to be honest, whenever I see an image like this, it is so starkly contrast for me just to see all this water in this absolutely desolate environment. You're like, there's no other water around. If you're talking that was Mars, you'd go, okay, but then there's just an entire lake right there. And now I'm wondering how much of an impact the actual reservoirs themselves are making. You know, he said they've dammed it along 15 areas, and so I can only imagine there might be 15 reservoirs. And so that is a massive area or surface area that is exposed to the sun that otherwise would not be exposed to the sun. It would just be a tiny little river that is constantly flowing. While all of this is playing a role in the decreasing water levels in the river, one of the key causes is the large-scale water transport projects mm. that have been built throughout this region. The Central that. Arizona Project is a system of canals that bring water from the Colorado River to central and southern Arizona. The project includes a series of dams and what reservoirs that? that store water for irrigation and other uses. The project wow. was authorized by the U.S. Congress in 1968 <laughs> and was completed in go. 1993. The canal wow. starts off south of Lake Mead and the Hoover Dam, where water is then piped underground and diverted from the river into a series of canals that run through the desert to What am I listening to? You are making man-made tunnels through mountains and then piping water through the desert where it's obviously going to just evaporate. And then you go ahead and wonder where your water supply is going. Like, clearly you can see where it's going. It was authorized back in 1968, I believe is what he said. And so there we go. My point is proven. Obviously back in 1968, they thought they had enough water supply to be able to maintain such a system. And especially they just didn't have the population relying on such a thing. And so they went, yeah, sure we have infinite water to be able to do this and then for it to be completed 30 years later and then for it to be 20 years after that or almost 25 years you can certainly see why there are going to be some problems arising the project was authorized by the u.s congress in 1968 and was completed in 1993 look at that the canal starts off south of lake mead and the hoover dam where water is then piped underground and diverted from the river into a series of canals that run through the desert to central and southern parts of arizona in all, the project supports more than 4 million people in central and southern Arizona okay. and receives nearly 1.5 million acre-feet of water per year from the Colorado River. Wait, that was more than an entire state scared. Look at this, you were having entire states that are getting less water supply than one canal. Like, for goodness sake, Nevada gets a third or a quarter of what one canal is allowed. And so no wonder when you just have all of that water being piped away from the Colorado River that is just being run dry. I mean, what confused me a little bit is I believe he said this water is getting piped from south of the Hoover Dam, and so I don't know how that comes into effect in terms of the lakes. Like, surely that is only released water. I mean, maybe if I look through here, I'll be able to find it. Is that one of them? No, that looks like some kind of runway, or I don't even know what that is. But surely if I look around, I should be able to find some of these aqueducts or canals, whatever you want to call them. I mean, maybe, is that one or is that a road? That looks like a, yeah, that's a road. That's going to be kind of annoying when I have to look through all of that. Is that a road? Yes, that's a road as well. Is this a road? Yeah, that joins into the same one. So I don't know where these are because I guess he said south. So south down here, south, maybe these are it. I bet they're more roads though. Yep, they're more roads. And so I don't really know where they are. And so they can't be too big. But from what that image was showing, they're definitely not small. While the system was designed to prevent water shortages throughout this region, the first water cuts of this project were announced earlier this year. Okay. The U.S. Borough of Reclamation announced that as a result of the Colorado River's current condition, the Central Arizona Project will see its first water cuts sometime this year. As the conditions <laughs> in the Colorado River worsen, these cuts could be announced anytime in the near future. 
crops. 74% of Arizona's water goes towards the agriculture industry, and many experts have predicted that landowners throughout the state will be forced to put land out of production as a result of having less water to use to water crops. <laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of what it becomes. Because as much as it might suck for the agricultural industry in that region to go to the wait side for the now, I feel as though in order of what people need, they need oxygen first, then water, then food. And so food comes below water and people, being 4 million of them apparently, need to be able to drink something. And so I guess when was this video made? Okay, it was only made a month ago, so at least I know it's fairly current, but really a lot can change in a month and I know that a lot has changed in a month and so I'm wondering if they've spared that entire thing along or not. While Arizona's water supply system is playing a part in the Colorado River's declining water levels, hmm. there is another important cause of the river's rapid decline. Right. Starting off at the Parker Dam in Arizona, the Colorado River Aqueduct oh. stretches for nearly 250 miles down towards Los Angeles. Whoa. At that point, it reaches Lake Matthews, which is a holding reservoir until the water is distributed throughout the state. That is crazy. In all, the Colorado River Aqueduct supplies water to more than 19 million California residents, <laughs> proving that it is one of the most necessary water suppliers for the entire state. That's the ridiculous. entire aqueduct outputs more than 1.2 million acre-feet of water per year which is roughly one-fourth of all the water California receives as part of the Colorado River Compact Agreement. Jeez. As we can see, the Colorado River is providing water to more than just the regional states in the southwest. Yeah. The two main aqueducts that the river supplies are one of the causes of its rapid decline. As of producing this video, the U.S. Borough of Reclamation announced that the Colorado River had fallen into a Tier 2 shortage, tier with even shortage. more water cuts expected by the end of this year. That's pretty crazy. Like it was saying, 19 million people were relying on one little thing. I mean, honestly, I'm surprised that they kind of let that happen. Like, that seems like if it goes to the wayside, you're not going to be having a very good day. I mean, to be fair, for quite a while, Australia, or at least Sydney, was in a very similar situation with Warragamba Dam being Sydney's main water supply, just being down as low as, I think it was 15, maybe even 10% or something ridiculous. I mean, now it's at like 99% constantly because it just never stops raining. But there was definitely a time where there was some serious water restrictions in place, and so I'm wondering what a level 1, level 2, level three whatever it goes up to actually means for the residents and more so what it means for the agricultural industry because from what i'm hearing they're just taking all the water i mean now that i know kind of where these ones are i do want to try and just find where this bugger is i mean if la's over there it has to come from this way so surely i can find it Okay, ooh, 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 is this it? Is this a road? It's probably going to be... Oh, of course it's a road. I mean, to be fair, I'm seeing a lot of green grass around here, so I think I found one of the culprits that is stealing a whole bundle of water, but I'm still yet to find one of these canals, so I just don't even know if they really exist because everything is just a road. But all of this raises the question, can the decline of the Colorado River actually be reversed? And how mm. will it impact the states in this region of America? Sweet. With the goal of providing the Colorado River with an influx of water supplies, 500,000 acre-feet of water will be released from the Flaming Gorge Reservoir into Lake Powell. This is in addition to the 161,000 acre-feet of water that was released just last year. Additionally, a plan has been outlined for the basin states to cut an extreme amount of water by early next year. Right. All seven states will be required to operate in a Tier 2 shortage condition, starting in January of 2023. This includes cutting between 2 and 4 million acre-feet of water usage by next year. This would then allow the Colorado River to stabilize itself without reaching Deadpool status. Jeez, I mean, they're going from, what, 7.5 down to 5.5, and so that's a massive drop, especially when you consider that California was already using over 4 of that, and so to go to 5.5, some people are seriously going to be struggling, and I mean, it kind of has to happen. There's no other ways about it, otherwise they're just going to completely dry up and it's not going to stabilize, but it sounds like there's some tough times ahead. I mean, I do want to know what he's talking about in terms of this reservoir that has 111 million or whatever he said. This is in addition to the 161 1,000 acre feet of water that was released just last year. Oh, uh, okay, 161,000. For some reason, I my brain read that as 161 million, and I was going, holy moly, where is all that water coming from? Because if these other states are struggling and having to deal with like 0.3 and 0.8 and 1, like pff, there's hundreds of millions of liters that are just flowing out the door. I mean, I know that you don't want to be using all of it, but it seems like they're using actually quite a decent or quite a nice ratio, but then that's right, it's not millions, it's hundreds of thousands. And so how does a flaming Gorge Reservoir impact the other two. Okay, oh, that's actually quite high. Wow, it's going all the way up there, all the way down. That water, I wonder how long it actually takes for it to be released and actually kind of get caught in the other end of it. But then for it to come all the way down here and just have, I guess, what they're hoping is a sizable impact on this lake and then just eventually into also Lake Mead as well. I mean, it all sounds like some big picture of big scale events. All seven states will be required to operate in a tier two shortage condition okay. starting in January of 2023. This includes cutting between 2 and 4 million acre-feet of water usage by next year. 
pretty crazy. This would then allow the Colorado River to stabilize itself without reaching Deadpool status. Deadpool. All seven of the basin states have until the end of this month to determine how they will cut back on their water usage from wow. the river. The Colorado River is facing many different problems, all stemming from just how many states are using the river's water. While the water cuts that were put in place may help the river replenish its water supplies, we have yet to see the full effect of this initiative, as most wow. of the cuts go into effect early next year. As of wow. right now, there has been disagreement between the basin states regarding how much water they will cut from their yearly usage. Therefore, only time will tell what the future of the Colorado River really turns out to be. Oh, like I was saying, it sounds like an absolute nightmare because all of a sudden you have people going, oh, well, if you're cutting back on your water supply usage, then that should mean that we don't have to, you know, surely you'll just take care of it. And if you cut back enough, then you can just fix the entire solution where really it takes all seven states plus everyone upstream again of that. But I guess like we saw this video came out at least a month ago, if not closer to two months ago, let's just call it six weeks ago. And so I can only assume that they would have had to make their decision by now. And so I wonder what the call actually was and how they've managed it, what kind of just under the table deals were done just to make sure that certain agricultural industries just get to keep doing what they're doing as look even though Nevada was only a small player at 0.3 million acre feet whatever the hell you want to call it I feel as though they're not going to be reducing too much considering most if not all of that water supply is going to be going to one place and that is just Vegas. While the Colorado River is one of the most important water suppliers in the southwest, Lake Mead's water supply is reaching record low water levels, mm. threatening the water supply at the Hoover Dam. To learn more about this ongoing crisis, be sure to click the video here. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video. 5.2 billion to end water scarcity certainly sounds interesting, but it also certainly sounds kind of like what Australia did. We had all this drought, and then we put all this money into building the desalination plant, and then it just has rained ever since it's been built, and they still have a contract to have the water supply, and so every year, a certain amount of water just has to be dumped out of the natural water supply just because, well, that's what the contract says. And look, I completely understand that as the government, you can't just suddenly have, what, 40 million people withering away because they don't have any access to water, but at the same time, like they said, they're doing a few cuts, but they're not sure if that is truly really going to work. They kind of seem like they just have to step it up to level three before it's too late or before they really get pushed to that level. I mean, I'm sure there's a massive seesaw balancing game going on between science, logistics, and money and everyone else involved, but my goodness, it just seems like you could really avoid the worst of it and just not get down so low if you just kick it into high gear a little bit earlier. And so look, even though this video is now six weeks old and there has been a few developments since then, I'm certainly interested to know how this entire thing pans out over the next even just couple of months, maybe even by the end of the year, if we have a better answer or a better trajectory as to what is going to happen to this lake because like they said you can't have water running out but at the same time it seems like that's the trajectory it's on if people don't change quickly but anyway in saying that i reckon i'm going to call it there so thank you for watching this video if you did enjoy it feel free to do the youtube algorithmic things down below also if this is the first video of mine that you are watching then make sure to go check out any other ones i've done also make sure to go check out the original video down in the description below or hey maybe even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future but all in all have a good one and see ya